one of uh, the things I'm most excited about actually right now is our, is our expansion into the UK. And I'll talk a little bit about that, um, as well as how we think about social and how um, the web and the news industry is really changing right now. Um, so BuzzFeed, uh, we're over 85 million unique visitors. 75% um, of that comes from social. So that means that our distribution is entirely dependent on people thinking our content is worth sharing. Um, we don't own a printing press. We don't have a broadcast pipe. We don't have any of the traditional um, ways that people reach a massive audience. However, we're reaching a scale, the size of a traditional, a, a, a big traditional media company, um, entirely through people thinking our content is worth sharing, which means every day we need to make stuff um, that is worthy of people passing on to their friends. Also, half of our traffic is mobile. Um, this is another big shift that we're seeing in the industry. Um, social and mobile have really converged. And if um, something isn't um, easy to view on mobile, it's almost impossible to share. Um, and then the majority of our audience is, is in their 20s and 30s. And so I think everyone is seeing these shifts to social and mobile. We're seeing it er, um, sooner, partly because our audience is, is so young and is adopting these technologies um, and these approaches uh, sooner. Um, so this is the UK. We, we um, didn't have anyone in the UK until um, about a year, a little less than a year ago. Um, and UK is really the fastest growing segment for, for BuzzFeed. Um, we are over 5 million unique visitors in, in, in the UK now um, and, and growing quickly. Here's our uh, very attractive UK team. Um, they made me say that. Um, and, uh, and we really feel that the web is undergoing a realignment. So portals were the organizing principle for a long time. Then search became the organizing principle of the web. And now social has become really the way that people connect with news and, and information. Um, one idea that kind of goes through this talk is the Board at Work network. There's, there's literally hundreds of millions of board office workers around the globe, and they spend half their day working and half their day posting stuff on Facebook, posting stuff on Twitter, emailing their friends, IMing each other, having chats. Um, and collectively, the Board at Work network is actually bigger than any traditional media company. Um, more, media can reach more people through the Board at Work network than if a network executive says, let's put this on at prime time. Um, and then more recently, the board in line network. So I used to hate mobile. Mobile used to be the worst thing ever. You'd do this amazing project, you'd tell your friends about it, it'd get passed around, and then someone would email back, um, I, I can't see this on my Blackberry, you know, we'll check when I get back to the office, right? Like, you couldn't actually view media on, on mobile devices. Now that's completely shifted. Smartphone penetration um, has made it possible to view media on, on your device. And beyond just viewing the media, the most popular apps on mobile phones are social apps, which means at BuzzFeed, when we see traffic coming from mobile, it is disproportionately social. It means that um, mobile and social have really converged in a big way, and we all need to like, keep in mind that if, if you make something that isn't viewable on mobile, maybe it's a beautiful infographic or a microsite or some new interactive thing that you build for your company, if it doesn't show up on mobile, you're going to lose more than half of the people who could potentially share it. Um, and so if you look at these three examples, these are, are uh, three pieces of internet media that are more popular than any primetime television show. You know, and, and, and no network executive said, I'm going to make this popular. Um, we all decided that a South Korean pop star video would be seen by more people than any of, of anything in, in the traditional media by sharing it and passing it around. Um, so what is social content? Is there a difference between content for the social web and other kinds of content? Um, David said that we're very serious and we're doing incredibly um, um, serious journalism. And uh, we do have a, a long form section that I'm very proud of. We've just hired foreign correspondents around the world. Um, we are um, building an investigative journalism team. But things like Basset Hounds running are very important <laughs> for the social web. Why are these dogs so important? And the reason is they're both cute and LOL. So um, why does cute and LOL matter on, on the social web? Well, if you think about it, when you go home for the holidays and the family dog runs out, everyone gathers around and pets the dog. And you feel closer to the dog, but you also feel closer to your family. And in fact, for most families, the moment when everyone's petting the dog is the highlight of the family weekend. And it's just all downhill the rest of the weekend. <laughs> So when you go out with your friends and you all have a couple drinks um, and you're telling stories and laughing and joking, 
The next day, you don't remember the specific joke. You don't, if someone asks you, what, oh, you laughed last night at dinner? What was the joke that made you laugh? You'd look at them like they're crazy. You just remember that you, that you shared a joke and you laughed, and that makes you feel closer to the p- person in your life. Things like Basset Hounds Running are, do this millions of times a day across Facebook. You laugh, you feel an emotion. At the same time, your friends feel an emotion. You connect around that. And this kind of content makes you feel closer to people in your lives. And so when people um, you know, make fun of the, some of the kind of content that they see as trivial on the web, they're forgetting that it's not just about the informational value of content. It's also about the social value and the ability for content to help people connect with each other. Um, and so we, you know, this is over a million views uh, uh, to, for the, to this post. Um, also, a few other kind of tips um, about what makes content more social. So content is about, about identity. So this is an example of uh, British identity. Um, not wanting to use emoticon, yet worrying you'll come across as sarcastic without one. We don't have this problem in America. I can write to someone, awesome job, and they don't think I'm being sarcastic. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> but if, you, if you have a... Um, Something that is true to your core to your identity. We've done posts on signs you were raised by Asian immigrant parents. We've done posts um, about the, the challenges of being excessively tall, you know, the awkward hugs you have with short people. Um, and even though that's not a broad universal thing, if you are excessively tall, you will email that and pass that around and post that on Facebook. Your friends will send it to you. You'll send it to your friends. If you were raised by Asian immigrant parents, you'll share that post with people, and they won't just understand. They won't just laugh and enjoy the post. They'll also understand you. And so identity is very important in terms of, of what people share. Um, Capture the moment. So two years ago, there was an earthquake in New York City. We are not used to earthquakes there. People were emptying out of buildings, running around like the world was ending. There was absolutely no damage. An hour later, we posted this on BuzzFeed, which was horrific photos from the East Coast earthquake. (laughs) This is one of the photos. There's a lot of other terrible ones of pictures being slightly askew and a lawn chair uh, falling over. This was something that for the next out, uh, for the next 12 hours, everyone was sharing millions of views, um, and it was because it perfectly captured uh, the, the moment. And, and that's another thing, particularly on Twitter, um, but also on other social platforms, where, where capturing the moment is a really important thing. Um, having a heart. There's a lot of social media um, experts who are very much stuck in their own head. Um, and they focus on APIs, and you should integrate this, and you should integrate that. But one of the most th- the things that people share the most are compelling human stories. This was something posted by a community member to BuzzFeed, a soldier who was injured severely in Iraq, who came back to his fiance, who helped him re- rehabilitate. And it was a touching, powerful, poignant story that was shared widely um, because it touched people in a, in a powerful, meaningful way with their heart. And so I think um, EQ is as important or more important on the social web than IQ. Um, humor is also inherently social. This printer is now co- called Bob Marley because it's always jamming. Uh, when you laugh with people, you feel closer to them and you connect with them in a deeper, deeper way. Um, and then human rights is also uh, something that you see, peop- that you see when, when you're connected to everyone you've ever met on a social network, you're much more likely to stick up for people, to defend equal rights, to, to, to say why doesn't, why, you know, to help people after a disaster. Um, and, and so I think some of the, the progress we've seen with things like marriage equality have been shaped in part by how connected we all are to each other. And you end up having more empathy for other people or people who are different than you um, when, when you are connected to them on the social web. However, people are less uh, inclined to share things like nude pictures of Scarlett Johansson. Now, that is not because people aren't very interested in nude pictures of Scarlett Johansson. In fact, when um, someone like Rihanna has nude cell phone pictures leaked, um, the search traffic spikes. It's like Google doesn't really like to talk about it, but just huge search volume of people looking for nude pictures of Rihanna. But you don't really see people post to Facebook like, I heard there's nude Rihanna pictures. I have a little time this weekend. Could someone send them to me? You know, because you, you look like kind of a sleazy person. And so one thing that I think is, you know, you might, you might, you know, search for the, and then open another browser tab and post on Facebook, like, join me in helping the people of Japan after the tsunami, you know, or something like that. Um, and it doesn't mean that you don't want to help the people of Japan. You do. And it doesn't mean that you don't want to see the nude pictures of Rihanna. You definitely do. Um, but you do it in different, you do it on different platforms. And I think um, you sometimes see people who think, 
oh, I want to make something go viral, so I'm going to put girls in bikinis in it. It has the exact opposite effect, because on the social web, you want to represent who you are, and you want to be, share things that you're proud to share and that, that reflect well on your identity. Um, so I wanted to also share some great posts from our UK, uh, our UK team. We um, have one site. It's buzzfeed.com. Um, tomorrow, we're actually launching in Brazil. Um, but if you visit from Brazil, you will just see the BuzzFeed site with, with new content added and, and the order of contents shifted and some local content created. So in the UK, when you visit our site, you see BuzzFeed, but it has some uh, additional posts that are from our UK team. Um, so this is an example of identity thing, uh, an identity post, 19 things Northerners miss when they move to London. Um, this is something that if you are from the North, you will share and pass around um, so your friends can understand why you're different than them. Uh, the countryside, um, being able to buy a drink uh, for more than 4 four eighty uh, a pint. Um, um, 27 middle class problems, another, uh, another good one. Um, had to turn down the brightness on the iPad because it hurt my eyes. Um, <laughs> I got camembert on my HTC screen. <laughs> hate it when that happens. Um, I can't believe I bought a poster with no bagel setting. Uh, <laughs> um, here's some, uh, another, another one. Uh, 28 newspaper magazine layout disasters. The Daily Telegraph has witchcraft threat to children. <clears throat> um, this man, uh, man receives 90 days for child porn. He seemed surprised he posed like that. Um, um, this is 37 things you'll only find funny if you're British. I don't find any of these funny because I'm not British. I don't even understand. I don't even understand what this post is about. Maybe, maybe afterwards, some of you can explain explain this to me. Like I've never seen a cat that looks like that. Um, but there are a lot of challenges uh, to to uh, expanding to the UK, and um, a few of the challenges, you know. We really have to do a lot of work on our headlines. Um, we, you know, 29 ways, I mean, to honor the glory of peanut butter and, and jam, uh, or uh, 33 splendid ice lollies to make this summer. Uh, um, or, uh, I mean, even just every word, like lots of words are spelled differently. Um, and uh, the weather here, it's like not fun to visit. Um, you know, especially for people from our LA office. Like right now in LA, it's probably like, you know, sunny and, and beautiful. Um, that's where all of our video is made. Um, I think, uh, and then also just the, the, some of the parking issues you have here. Um, <laughs> but the biggest problem is, is there's just not enough of you. So, so we have, over, we have a potential audience of over 300 million people in, in the U.S. Um, and, you know, just barely over 60 million uh, in, in the U.K. And so my main sort of ask, I mean, uh, I thought, you know, what, what do I want from this audience? Because it's, it, uh, you know, one thing that someone told me once is that you should have like an ask. I don't know, I know exactly what that means. But, um, you know, we, we have amazing branded content advertising, so you guys could, you know, if you have a company and you want to, to, to light up the social web with an amazing campaign um, that really tells a story, there could be advertising, but that, that's not really what I want. Um, you know, you could read the site, that would be great, but what I really want is just more Britons. Like, I want, you guys need to have more kids, you need to reproduce more, you need to, like, loosen up on immigration, let more people in, um, because... Uh, we really need a bigger market here. It's like it's like a really it's a real bummer to have you know a big a big local market, and then you know when the Guardian expands the U.S., they have this huge market, and it's like not fair that it's smaller going the other direction. <laughs> um, so that's that's my main ask. So go forth and multiply, uh, and at dawn we ride. Thank you so much. There's one quick question. The boss is here, Nicholas Coleridge, the, the big boss at Condé Nast. And we publish not just Wired, but you know, Vogue and GQ and Vanity Fair. So give us that one tip about taking Condé Nast into the modern era. What BuzzFeed knowledge do we need to execute? Well, I've been very inspired by the Condé Nast um, publications, particularly the fashion publications, in that the advertising adds to the publication. If you, ripped all of the, if you ripped all the ads out of Vogue, it would be a worse product. 
Um, and if you ripped all the ads out of you know, some, of, some of, the, of the best you know, Condé Nast titles, it, it would be a worse product. And, and I think on the web, we've been stuck in these banner ads where brands can't really tell a story. It's not good for the brands, and it's not good uh, for the consumer. And so for me, one of the inspirations for our advertising model is to say, give brands a whole page, let them tell a story, break out of banners, um, and, and do it in, for the social web and do it in a digital way, but, but really try to make the, the advertising content into something that adds to the, adds to the, to the product. And so that's something that I've learned from, from, from you, and, and maybe there's things that in the way that we've done that that could, could also work for your properties online. Thanks very much. Jonah Peretti. Thank you.